Hi everyone, happy Friday. Thanks for joining us in the locker room today. I'm Alan Locker and I, as I've mentioned, I grew up watching As the World Turns and Guiding Light. I joined the PR team there for 13 years before the show went off the air. And as I was sitting here quarantined, I was thinking about how I was missing my Oakdale families and thought some of you might be feeling the same way too. Since I did my first World Turns show on April 3rd, the fans have been asking me for this guest and I can't tell you how excited I am that she said yes. I do have to thank Martha for her help, but joining me today is the incomparable Elizabeth Hubbard who played Lucinda Walsh on As the World Turns. Please welcome the one and only Elizabeth Hubbard. Liz. Ooh. Hey, Liz. Hi. Hi. Good to see you. I, I don't see you. I look at myself alone. No, I don't want to look at myself. <laughs> Okay. You're looking right at you yeah. can look right at me. Perfect. How you doing during this time? <laughs> you mean <laughs> as, to, as we're quarantined. Yeah, as we're quarantined. I'm being very careful. I'm being intelligent. I, I would you like to see my mask and my gloves and everything like that? I'm I'm real no, I'm I take it seriously. Um because I was I played a doctor once and you, you pay attention to stuff like that. And uh, I can walk around outside, and it, it's a gorgeous spring this year. I don't know why it's so gorgeous. I have Asian pears. I don't know if you, if you can't see it. They're blooming like mad. And I see my, my son wanted to bring in a vase of them. No, no, you, we won't be able to eat the pears. We have to keep every bloom that we have. So it's been very beautiful, but one has to be inside and make sense out of things. And, and pay attention to other people that are more frightened. I'm, I'm not so... I'm not that way. I'm a stoic person. Doctor's daughter, played a doctor on television. You know, uh, I've worked, uh, have a good immune system all my life. And uh, and, and, and I, it means a lot to me. So I, I can understand other people's fears. And as an actor, of course I can understand because that's what I do. I There's nobody here for me to look at. I read them, I understand them. I know how I would play them if I got to play them. So I even know how to play somebody I know up here who's very nervous about everything. And, but I'd have to play it in an interesting way. So I have, I have to have my props when I have this, I was given to Lucinda. And I have my hanky props. And I have, in some place I have the, uh, the little pink uh, um, flask that I used before Lucinda had the cancer story. And uh, I had, you know, because a prop, I'm a prop actress, gives you the chance to do two or three things at once. And that's a better way to tell the story than to come and lecture people. And I have taught acting. I'm lucky me, I taught from the studio. I'd, I'd leave Brooklyn after the whole day, get in the car. I had to pay for that car, by the way, to get to where I was teaching work. And I would fall asleep in the back of the car. I was that tired. And I, life comes to me. You came to me. I didn't ask for you to come. You came. And uh, for example, uh, I got a chance to help at the Garner Correctional, maximum you know, correctional prison here in Connecticut to help them with Shakespeare. Well, I'd love to do that. It came my way. And it started, they wanted to do uh, Julius Caesar, you know, men. They're all men, obviously. And uh, Okay, I get there and they want to do King Lear. Wonderful, let's get going. And I, I had, a, I, they loved it. I, at one point I said, am I talking too much? No, please talk. They wanted, they wanted. And that's what an actor really, you want the audience. By the way, honey, all you guys out there, you don't realize the audience has a job. The audience has to work too or nothing happens. We're all in this together. And uh, the audience, you can feel as an actor, how they are tonight, what's going on. And I had to deliver the night that Robert Kennedy was killed. Does anybody remember in, in this new world? Anyway, oh, I'm sure, I'm was, sure there's plenty, yeah. I was in a play where we spoke to the audience and I was the lady that didn't want to be there upper class, you know, oh, and my husband made me come. English, I'm not gonna do the lines. But at one point she actually was in the script. She said, look, I, I, I don't mean gas chamber. It's about a spastic child to play. I don't mean gas chamber, but I do mean put them to death. 
on the night that Robert Kennedy had just been killed. Wham! Because the audience has to be, that's what makes it good. So if I was ever good, it was because we were collaborating. Uh, we're creating together so that we all know. And I know from the gifts that I'd had from fans, uh, from the things that happened with fans, uh, like the, the guy in the cab, uh, I'm a native New Yorker, you know, can't help it. Here I am in Connecticut, I love Connecticut too, but I'm a native New Yorker, born and bred. And he, in, the, in the cab getting home, he says, um, you helped me so much when my mother was dying. Oh, really? And he told me, and I said, oh, I remember that. And we chatted with each other. We get to the, my door, and how much do I owe you? He said, you never pay in my cab. Wow. Guess what? I met him again a month or two later. And he, you know, he took me, obviously, in the cab. And he said, you never pay in my cab. And I have <laughs> had that. Thank you, Lucinda. Thank you for letting me last that long. Uh, who knew you could go for one thing, you got one shot, and you end up a hundred years later. And uh, oh, the other thing I wanted to say, because it interests me, I started writing about this. Lucinda became what I made her become. If another actress had gotten the part, and there was a very good actress on Young Dr. Malone that was up for it, she would have been different. So we were making it. We were all making it together. And uh, when, the, when the fans who I didn't get to meet that much, but when they would tell me things, you even try to speak Italian. Or, you know, it was, there was a, uh, I used to send poems whenever I felt like it. And I have some, they're very, I don't know where they are. They're very well, 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 yeah. see, I'm, I'm, see, pretty, pretty, pretty. Okay. Anyway. Enough about the fans. fans. No, no, but about they, the fans. Just, a woman said to me, a very hard poem. She said, I don't understand this, but I like it. Thank you. Well, the fans, the fans are here in droves That's nice. telling you, telling you how beautiful you look, how oh. amazing. You're the queen. But mm -hmm. I I asked some people for, for some questions ahead of time, but I want to read you one from somebody in Holland because I thought this was really pretty oh. amazing. Christian from Holland said, as a 12 year old Dutch boy, my teacher told me to watch more English television to learn English. I watched As the World Turns every day and that helped. I then wrote a letter to Lucinda and she responded, how awesome. That was 11 years ago, but I kept every picture and Christmas card. At the same time, I came out of the closet as Luke Snyder did on As the World Turns. Uh -huh. it, was a, it was a difficult period in my life my mother, like Lily, couldn't handle it well. But when Luke told Lucinda I'm gay, Lucinda said, darling, can I change it? Then I can accept it. And Christian said, that really helped me and helped my childhood. You really do have such a large, you know, little lines like even that, that, you know, you, you know, have such a huge impact on people's lives. Good. And, and, and I worked hard at that so that they would know that she loved this boy. And uh, at one point he was gonna say, I thought you wouldn't love me anymore because I'm gay. And uh, I, I, I think we reorganized the scene. <laughs> we had a director that let us. And I, and I said, that you would even think that about me is, is breaking my heart. Because you know I love you. And, and I'm there. And that's what matters. It, it, was, it was amazing. I actually watched it today. Um, we have a lot of people mentioning the doctors and with the doctors on retro TV. Yeah. Talk, talk about that role and talk about um, <laughs> the research, the research that you did. You, you mentioned your mom being, she was the my, first my person. My was in the first class that took women at Columbia. It took five women. No, they all get married and it's not worth wasting our money. They all worked until they died. And my gift to my mother, when I got this, uh, Dr. Althea, first I had it, somebody I could call her up every time. What is a such and such? You know, what is a, I can't think of it, some <laughs> whatever the hell it was. And my mother worked all the time, but she would stop. I think it was between two and 2.30 and she would have lunch for the first time in her life, watching her daughter playing a doctor. So I gave her a present and she gave me many presents. That's amazing. Uh, should we bring in your daughter? 
I love my. You ready for? Yeah, could uh, some fans so, are saying they love when you did, you did the that we all loved each other. Hey, hey, can you do the uh, the fans were asking Lily Darling as I bring on Ms. Martha Byrne to the okay. equation. Uh, I'll, I'll say it in the baritone. <laughs> <laughs> Lily, we... Lily, where the <laughs> hell are you? Get in. <laughs> oh. Hey, Martha. Hi. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Listening, uh, listening to my mother there speak. Hello, mother. Yes, dear. Hello, dear. Hello, darling. I remember we had something and they wanted us to hit each other with axes and take oh, a wash. And I got there late. You know, I was working or something. And and I took one look. I said, we're not doing that. And then when we're alone, I said, why didn't you say something? And she said, I knew you'd take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. I, I knew you'd take Liz, care Liz, do you remember the knock on your dressing room door when you met Martha for the first time? No. <laughs> no. Martha does. Oh, well, better. I do, I do. I remember walking down in 57th Street, I knocked on your dressing room door and I introduced myself because the actress who was playing Lily before me left only a few days before I started. Yeah. And I knocked on your door and I introduced myself and you looked at me and you said, you have the most beautiful eyes. And oh. I said, thank you. And that's our first introduction. And then it's been a whirlwind, wonderful roller coaster, incredible ride. I've been up and down and all around. My God. Oh my. Dancing, a lot of tickling, a lot of fun. Yeah. fun. We had sequences. I played Dietrich. I, I, I don't know what I played. And we had fun. We, we, did. we had fun. And, and we struggled. And, and we fought and we made it. We didn't fight that way. No. We fought the good fight, which is what you got to fight all the time. Gotta fight. You said it. You said it right, Liz. You made it because the pe the people, you know, think this mother daughter relationship was so true to life. You know, we like you just said, you know, ups, and, ups and downs. Really hated Lucinda most of the time. Broke her heart. Lucinda was always alone. Nobody ever wanted to see Lucinda at Christmas. Uh, you know, they were always firing me for whatever I did. You know, jumping in the pool, John. They were going to fire me. And once with Lily, we had many many presents. You know because we had a, a, a butler and there was a teeny present at the top and I'm all alone, no one loves me, everybody's having a good Christmas. And I picked up the creamy, teeny one and I, I figured it must have a ring in it. And I took it and I threw it in the fireplace because I wasn't even good enough to give her a ring. Aww. And I think the audience gets it. You know, they get it. They, they know what you They do. They love it, they love it. Hey Liz, Michael Maloney uh, was was talking about your your ad libs. He he said a favorite <laughs> ad lib was when a jail jail bound barber wanted to sell Simply Barber to Lucinda, and you said, "Darling, Simply Barber, so, Simply Barbara, Simply wouldn't be Simply Barbara without Barbara." Um, <laughs> how how you know how did you do all those ad libs and and Martha? What did that do, especially when you first started? Because um, I'm sure Liz, Liz being Liz had to have thrown you off. But, but Liz, you go first on, on you know, the master of the ad lib. <laughs> they, they come out of the essence of the thing. And, and when I was doing Hutatida Schlechtatida in Holland, they asked, because I'm an American mother of you know, the Dutch family, and they asked me, please not to try not to do the ad libs because they couldn't get the you know the guy writing in the Dutch in fast enough. <laughs> I try, I try, but uh, with with me, the songs, whatever I was thinking of, were the truth of it. So they just come out. They they just they just come. You don't do that uh, in the theater. Uh, although I did add a, a, a line in the physicists on Broadway. I had to go, anyway, it doesn't matter. I had to cross 40 feet. I'm the nurse of a, a, a scientist who's pretending to be mad. And I had to say, I love you. And I asked, uh, could I please, I'm a nurse in Switzerland, say, I'm nervous. I love you. As opposed to, I love you. you know, come on, we got it. No, they let me, so even on Broadway. Hmm. 
And Martha, how, how did, you know, watching Liz do Liz, throw, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm saying, I'm saying throw you, because I would assume at such a young age, it's got to be, you know, no. in some way. I, don't Not, I was ready, you know, when I first started, and I've talked about this before, I was, I came from a film background where you were only allowed to say your lines and that's it, especially a child actor. They didn't, you know, that was your job. You stood there, you did your lines and then you, you were gone. There was not a lot of interaction with the older adults and the, and the actors for prep, uh, prep or acting, you know, nothing like that. And so when I worked with Liz the first day, I was blown away by how free Liz was with her work. And I had to catch up. You know, I had to, I wanted to catch up. That's the, that's the most important thing. I think with anyone that's worked with Liz, if you go on the ride, you are always going to be better for it as a person, as an actor, as a human being, you are going to be educated. You're going to learn more about the world. You're going to learn more about art and literature and, and travel and, and experience. And as an actor at 15, how much life experience do you really have? You don't have a lot of that. So Liz, would always educate me in such a, a organic way. Um, and I wanted that, I just craved it. And then once I got over the fear of not saying the lines the right way, we were off to the races. And I think that's why we were successful as a mother daughter team is because, and I said this to Liz the other day on the phone, Mothers and daughters have a very specific relationship. It's very common, it's a common thread through teenage daughters and their mothers and teenage sons and their mothers. And I think that's why we resonated with each other. Liz also trusted my input and we were a team. We worked together. She always treated me as a peer, never as a child. And I respect, I was so, to me that was like heaven because, you know, again, coming on the show, I was the new kid and, there was a new family. The Snyders were, you know, infiltrating the world. Um, but this is before that. Was it's because there was trust. Yeah. You trusted me. You knew yeah. I wasn't going to try to ruin you. I, yeah. I worked with actors who tried to ruin me. And in fact, I spent one summer ruining the other person so they would stop that in a show. <laughs> and they did. Good. And I thought, for you. I the summer learning how to ruin somebody's performance? I don't want that. But you trusted me. That's and I trusted you. And I knew if I wanted to go a little further, like in Malta, when I pretended I was dying from the sandwich and people said, she's being poisoned. She thinks she's being poisoned. And I break a sandwich and I eat half. And I go, oh, 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 oh. and somebody said, I'm trying to hurt that child. I said, no, I knew whatever she did would be wonderful. Yeah. Just cried more. You know, she, it was, it was lovely because we trusted each other and uh, you need that. <clears throat> then it gets good, you, whether it's in Broadway, in a film, and I, I've worked with some of Melvin Douglas and Gene Hackman and all these, you know, wonderful, uh, Robert Shaw. Oh my God, there has to be uh, respect, dignity, and trust. And if you go a strange way, let's discuss it. You know, let, and I've done that often when people have worked with me and, they think their job as their day player is going to be such and such. And then I used, I used to explain, I got to tell you where my character is coming from because we're going to have the scenes together and you'll, you'll know where it's coming from because I'm telling you, and then we'll, we'll work it out. But I'm sure they, some of them went home saying that bitch. No. She ruined me. Well, then they were fools because yeah, fool. they, they didn't, person. they didn't realize what the gifts that they were getting as actors who are, where are they now? No, we were, we were. Yeah, exactly. Where are they now? Collaborating. We should be getting it. The main thing is we're in this together, like this goddamn thing that's happening, the, you know, coronavirus. We're in this together. Let's find the ways that we can be together. That doesn't mean we have to be the same. Doesn't mean that we have to agree on everything. But let, let's give space. And the other thing that I feel about acting and my whole, the way my life has turned out and it, it's been rather long, things happen. You let them happen. I didn't ask to teach at the, at the prison. I was asked for, they wanted it. It worked. Things, you have to leave room for it and then things will happen. And if we can start doing that more 
And that's, I think the soaps helped that. You saw people struggling and trying to get things right in their lives. And people went home and thought, gee, maybe if I was nicer to my husband, he wouldn't hit me or whatever people say. And we had a job, right, Martha? And we did. And, and, and we were sincere. Uh, and no matter, you know, I, I love to play crappy things and props. You know, this is Lucinda's, some fan gave me that. I love, you know, any stuff that can make it fun. But the, the glass, the glasses on your head. I don't like these. <laughs> go with this, so I, that's why I'm wearing them. But, but Lucinda had glasses. She would hold something in her hand. I always had some spare glasses. <laughs> I always had some. Had her seat on the desk until that stupid producer said she can't do that anymore. <laughs> I wonder who that was. Liz, Liz is there a uh, Lily Lucinda scene that stands out for you for? I don't know, the writing or performance or, or something that cracked you up, something that you can remember that was special to you? Martha has a better memory than I have. Well, I, I, I was thinking about this morning, one of my, I have so many, I mean, I'd have to say hundreds of them, hundreds of scenes. There was one, you know, we fought all the time. Our characters fought all the time. But when Lily, when I came back to As World Turn and, and Lily, disavowed her adoption to Lucinda, which was, you know, a big, you know, dramatic moment. I don't know if I would say it was our favorite scene, because, but it was so emotional and so filled with history and pain and, and forgiveness. And that stood out to me, you know, the scene in Malta when Lily was being drugged by Orlena. And, and I always felt like, you know, I, I, what of what Liz, we talked about this too the other day about, when Lily's life was less dramatic, and <laughs> I know what you're and Liz, and I said, I'm here pouring tea. You know, my as an actress, Martha is going. I'm, this is not. This is like, uh, why am I pouring tea? And Liz said, Why don't you play that Lily's bored with being bored? You know, like she needs a life. <laughs> That's a good thing to play, by the way. <laughs> that she's like, I don't want to just pour tea. I'm going to go steal a diamond from somebody in the middle of, I don't know. So I, you know, I can't say there's one specific beat. We had. So many wonderful scenes when I first came on at, at Lucinda's mansion and with the cat. I remember that when when Lily chased Lucinda around with the cat because Lucinda oh, was allergic to the kitten. Cats. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that because I love the kitten was so cute that too. Was way back. That, that was, was, and you started sneezing and then yeah. and you knew that I had the cat because you started sneezing and, um, and we developed it because we had a chance to rehearse it right. and we had the time to make it into something and make it funny and make it sad all at the same time. One of the first things when Lily came on, uh, I, I don't remember the plot, but she's weeping by the last shot and uh, in the end of the show. And she's, the poor child is crying. And I asked for a martini glass, vape, a special Charmeuse thing. So Lucinda had changed, wore something pretty, had a drink and was in her own world. That's what I wanted to show. And then as life went on between the two of them, they found their way, they got better, they learned, they grew, and, and that's where we're at. So that at the end of the show, when the show went off the air, I was very pleased what I had managed for poor Lucinda. Nobody loved her. She had a mother that threw her out. You know, nobody ever loved her. She had no education, nothing. Like that. But at the end, both my daughters, Lovely. So I was, I got it. That's for sure. That's for sure. Really? Hey, Martha, is that is that the dog still trying to get in? No, that's on Liz's side. <laughs> what is it on Liz's? That's rain. Oh, it's rain. Oh, it's the rain. Oh, it's the rain. So funny. I, I couldn't tell it because Martha said the dog was trying to oh, come no, in earlier. I like. a few choices. If the sun isn't out or I look 250 years old. No, stop. Oh, stop. Stop that. Well, I just want to, uh, we were talking about Luke earlier. Well, the uh, young boy right here up on the screen is who played Luke at a young age, Christopher, oh. Christopher Tavani. Oh, he says, good to see Luke. everyone. Look, look at his face. I can't believe I will, he's oh. in his 20s. <laughs> hey, Christopher. Hey, Christopher. We worked together a lot. We had a lot of good oh. stories together. Wow. Oh, yeah. He was kidnapped a lot, wasn't he? Kids too. There were one poor little girl, your daughter, I can't remember her name. They fired her because she got heavy. Yeah. They wanted to do a ballet story. And they hired a, an actress who 
little girl who never went off her lines. You know, she was like forty-five year old woman, this big. But I went <laughs> about that little girl. You know who? It was. And okay. I said, okay, she's better. I can see you better. Yeah. Very no, she's very heavy, but she can tap. Let's let her do it. Let's do it. And, you know, Lucinda can organize it, and we can all praise her, and she'll have something to. They, they wouldn't, but you know, I tried. I you tried. did try. Liz, talk about the days at the doctor's when it was live. What was, what was <laughs> live? Ooh, uh, literally live? In other words, if you went up, uh, the stage manager would give you a prompt, like in the theater. And uh, sometimes the elevator door would open, and there'd be a camera there. Okay. <laughs> but of course, you had to have real actors. <laughs> that was before there were any models or anybody else, except because you had to or you couldn't survive. And then, of course, we got longer. And then we had the cue card guys with big, like, uh, uh, with your lines written down. And I I have always rewritten my lines. And the writer of the doctor said, I see you're still writing, rewriting your lines. Well, somebody should. You know? <laughs> I, would, I was blue. So I would write in my lines, you know, with blue. And they're your friends, so they're always going. They know where you are in the scene if you're if you're up. And they would, be, they they. We had a lot of good people backstage. We were all together. It was live, and actually, they would sometimes give us drinks on the set. At the end of the day, you know, before you went to the Edison Hotel to rehearse. And uh, I have lots of things in my house. I I, I would say I like that. Take it. You know, they give me props and, and uh, they were fun. We were fond of each other. We were all, and, and the cameramen, we had three cameramen and uh, real guys. And they would change the shots, you know, to make you look better. And they also, to change the lens in those days, you had to switch. And so you knew when you were in close up. Oh, I like that because then the actor knows how to behave. So I, later in life, I would think this has got to be close up and you'd be 10 miles in the background of somebody else's scene. But anyway, yeah. it, was, um, it was theater. You, it was theater. You watched, you've watched some of the doctors on retro TV, right? You were pretty I, surprised I, I, at how. To see so far, I'm going to look at them. One with Dr. Bellini, because that was the big love affair. Uh, Dr. Althea, the lady and, you know, and all that kind of thing. And the, and the top Italian. Nice Jewish boy, by the way. Uh, and, and he was wonderful. And uh, the fans loved the two of them together. Once I was in a restaurant in New York, of course, you know, on the east side I'd never been to before. And my son said, you've got to eat this food. It's wonderful. And the waiter came up, a real professional waiter. And he looked at me and he said, oh, artiste. Artist? Thank you. That's me. All that. And he gave us wonderful truffle pasta because he loved Dr. Bellini. Dr. Bellini, and you think, thanks. I mean, that happened a lot in, in, in Holland. You know, a lot of free drinks, a lot of free dinners because they say, thank you, thank you. And because they're part of it. We're all together, we're together. Well, we have a lot of Dutch fans watching now. They're all saying hello from the Netherlands. Hi. hi. <laughs> I have, a story. Um, I have a Netherlands story because the first time I went to the Netherlands, I got to have the best escort on the planet, Elizabeth, to take me around. And we had such a lovely time, didn't we? We went to the, out into the country and we, we, we went to a mill. We did all that. Paolo climbed the windmill up to the top. Yeah, yeah. Nothing crazier than that. Um, it was just what a beautiful country. It was just we had such a wonderful time, and it was rain. It was like out of a movie. It was raining, and we were walking over the bridges, and we went. To, it was wonderful. What a wonderful time! What a great thank you for taking me around to see the beautiful city. It was, it was wonderful. I want to go back. Just like the Americans, they they miss the show very much, very oh, much. Thank you, um, Liz. I know a lot of fans would uh, beat me up if I didn't ask about working with Larry Brigman. I was Larry. Mm -hmm. it, I, whenever anybody would say, why are you on the show? I'd say, I think I was brought on to make Larry Brigman smile, you know? <laughs> and uh, again, we would, uh, we were married long, many, many, many things happened. 
and we would have a chat. You know, we'd, we'd work things up, and and I remember I can't remember the scenes anymore. But we got all the way through the dress rehearsal, and uh, he said to me, "If I really loved you, it would be as if you cut your hair and I cut there, and we put our blood together, and we and we made into." So I said, "Oh my! I changed the whole performance. This was serious." He brought that, uh, and of course there was a bathtub scene, which I made up. That's been on the View or wherever the hell they showed that. And they wanted me to drop my towel and my beautiful boobies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, would make. And he's my doctor. I, I, I think he knows. So I, I thought of an idea. I said well, we had a huge bathroom scene with a tub, huge like a swimming pool, really. And uh, so up here I have a big tub, but I know that I don't want to float, so I have to. It isn't that as big as the one on Lucinda's thing. So he, he he comes into the said something to me, and uh, in in played it all the scene whatever it was in that bathroom, and I said, well, what if I push you in? And we hate each other, right? And then he it worked he worked it up. So I pushed him in. He had to get another suit in case it, we had to do it again. And then he pulled me in. Bang! I had a nice robe so I wouldn't get hurt. And we're in the in the bubbles and the heat and the thing, and we say, "Why? Why are we fighting? We really want to be together." And they get together after that. I thought that was real. They they were going to fire me over that. And literally, I they said, "I'll meet you at a hotel on Fifty Eighth Street." At a hotel? Are they going to beat me with with me? Anyway, I survived. Well, we know it's we know it's many people's favorite favorite moment, a, a highlight for sure. But but Martha has a great story, I think, about uh, as that scene went to black. Martha, Did you know that, Liz, yeah. Did you know what happened when it aired? I can't remember. Okay, so what happened was you, they did the scene and it got to edit. It went through. It got approved, and then when it was just about to air, they realized that you flashed. Oh. And they had to go to black. So when it's aired, when you watch the show, they went to black because, and you hear you laughing and Larry laughing because you did show your booby. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I played on Broadway in the Penny Chayefsky play, Stalin's first wife. And I he had to rip my blouse off me. That was part of the scene. And in those days, you, you didn't. I had a rubber something underneath it and you ripped the blouse off. Nowadays, I wouldn't have gotten a part because my boobies aren't worth it. You know, I'll, I'll look at something and I'll say, why is that actress? She's awful. Oh, she takes off her shirt. And says, oh, well, you know. <laughs> so uh, you don't always need boobies. There, there was a famous yeah. actor, in a Irish actor in the 18th century. He said, I never kiss a leading lady if they don't know how I feel about her. Mm. I'm not doing my job. Good point. Yeah. Good point. Liz, we have this question from Rob. Um, you played Sarah Poindexter on the Dutch soap. How did you react when you found out what she did for a living? <laughs> oh, I was enchanted. I was enchanted because I thought I was being hired just yes, to be the grandmother of the people and all. But they gave me a profession. Oh, you know, okay. So I, I started doing my homework because uh, I'm playing a sexologist. And I had met somebody because she had been rude to my then beau here and talked sex to him at a party. And I, I said, which one? Anyway, it doesn't matter. So I went to a, a, a sex shop and I, I, I could find it in New York on the West Side. And I said, this is me. This is what I'm doing. The pleasure chest? <laughs> like that. It might have been that. Hey, this it is might be the only one. <laughs> Tell me what I would have and give me, I got toys, I got everything. And I, you know, I discussed everything. I, I had a meeting with another sexologist who wore five inch alligator pumps. Oh, I thought, shall I do that? Can I do that? Can I, and I didn't, but anyway. And, and she wouldn't let me pay her. She, I think she got $500 an hour. And so I sent her some flowers and I sent her pussy willows. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 and then 
I read all this. I have a bookcase here in my house with all the books that I was reading. Oh, you know, no, okay. Oh. Oh, I said, I'm bored with this. And I say, maybe she's bored with it too. She had something else now, new poetry or something. So, and and when the, when the family got fired because there's a Holland, the way they fire, it's, it's a way they do it. I went around saying, doesn't some other family need a sexologist? <laughs> what I had to do was go to the most elegant woman on the show. I don't, I can't remember her name. Beautiful, elegant, and first time I meet her, hand her a dildo. I said, I, I, I bet, can we do something else? I brought sex toys, you know, funny, ador adorable things that I could, you know, make something out of. No, you have to. I talked to the actress. She said, it's awful. I said, I, I, I have to. And then I said, but because of my experience in the, in the world, or so I'll do everything I can to make it look like I didn't do it. <laughs> That's great. I can't do any more than that. I didn't. The Liz are asking, Laura is asking, how did you like living in the Netherlands while you were doing the show? Oh, I liked it. I, 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 I liked it very much. Uh, I was in the north uh, and I've been most places except Rotterdam. And uh, I've, I've been to many little towns and I have you know, talked to a lot of people and uh, somebody wanted me to do another show there um, in, a, in a mill, uh, you know, it was, um, they didn't need a sexologist anymore. Oh. That's too bad. Cured. I mean, you, you, I, I wish I could watch that because I seeing you as a sexologist is. Well, I didn't get God. to do much of that except once my doctor daughter had to do something and I said, leave him to me, I'll take care of it, you know. <laughs> but they didn't develop that. Uh, it, it didn't last as long as it should have. That would have been fun. That would have been a lot of fun. So some fans are asking for both of you to share memories of working with, I mean, Liz, you worked with, uh, so did Martha, um, Scott Bryce, many Craig Montgomery's, yeah. but working with Scott and Finn Carter, who played Sierra. What was it like working with the two well, of them? Those Scotty are some Bryce, great I times. Love, yeah, I love Scotty Bryce. We did so much together um, and I'm really fond of him. And we fought hard to make it into some kind of a good relationship. Uh, Sierra. And, and Sierra w was always difficult. Um, she came on never having done any work before and, and not sure, very sure of herself, I would say, so that she was always worried about things a lot. Um, I had the same, I had a, I, you know, I worked I have to say the same with Scotty about freedom of work, you know, of, of how we would, Liz and I did this once too, where we, we were doing a scene and, and we just didn't feel right about it. And then, and then we both realized, what if I took your lines and you took yeah, my lines remember that. And, and that and it worked, it just worked. And the director, you know, director. Do that. and it worked, it worked. And I think that's what, uh, Back in the day, you know, back in the day, that would upset her. Freedom, yeah. freedom. We have, but we had freedom then, you know. And and I think when when people start, like, you know, with Finn too and Scotty together, they were such a super couple, and were thrust yeah. into this intense kind of uh, popularity. And um, for me, working with Brian Bloom, like I was just kind of starting out, and they were just they were so wonderful together. They did have an incredible chemistry together. And Finn's, I still see Finn. I saw Finn about two years ago. And, um, you know, these people hold such a dear place in my heart because what a wonderful experience as a, a teenager to be able to create and have fun and, you know, have these wonderful people to work with and experiences. So, you know, I, we had, like Liz was saying, we had Scotty and I, we had, you know, he was like, a, at one point when Hunt was playing Craig, they toyed with the idea of Craig and Lily being together. And I thought, whoa, that would be so wrong because Scotty and I had developed this kind of father because Lily didn't have a father in her life and he became like a father figure to her. So when 
he ran Dusty off the road. That was one of the first storylines we did when he you know, hit and run Dusty. It came out that it was Craig who almost killed Dusty. And he betrayed me several times with my mother. And when, when Lily found out that Lucinda had slept with Craig and how could he do that to Sierra? You know, like there's so much drama. Only, we were too good. They only let us do it once. That's how, yeah. Because <laughs> it looked too good. We too were, good. you know, we were cooking. We were Captured cooking. it the first time. You, you both had such amazing chemistry with Scott, both Craig and Lucinda's relationship was so great and Lily and Craig's relationship was so great. That's why so many people are asking. I mean, it was such a great relationship on both ends. And we laughed all the time. Like we were, we had so- oh, That's where we learned, they think you went up and they give you a prompt. Hmm. No, I'm acting. I'm, I'm acting. Brilliant. Thank you. And then they, they mm -hmm. realize, oh, you know, they're planning this. Mm -hmm. We had one produce uh, director who actually lived here in Connecticut, and he used to say, "Go to the chair, count five, then go to the bed, count two, and then, 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 then two, three. And everybody hated him, but I knew what he was doing. He was saying, "Go and you have the count of five, act, do whatever, do whatever you're doing, do it. Then you go there, and it's up to you." And I thought, "That's good. I won't tell you how to direct if you don't tell me how to act." You know. <laughs> Well, anyway. <laughs> hey Liz, Brett, Brett was asking, what was it like uh, when Doug Mar Marlin started writing for Lucinda? He never How that changed. He, he wrote for young people. He, he did love. Doug didn't write for Lucinda. No, he wasn't interested in that. I had once uh, wanted him to do an all about Eve story on the doctors because he wrote for the doctors, you know. And uh, he, he was not interested in that. He, he wanted to do Young Love. So. You know, what what can I say? That's that. That was his specialty, and uh, mm -hmm. he did. And uh, I spent a lot of time with him because he had a fancy house, and then and Lucinda's house was like his house with the three Christmas trees. You know, and it, it was here in Connecticut. I can't remember where it was now. And uh, so, uh, although we didn't always agree on a lot of things, I spent a lot of time there, and he worked hard. He worked downstairs out off of the kitchen in a small maze room or something like that. And he, he, he took his work very seriously. Yeah. Um, he did. He did. And I think that's the, the you know, you could never call him between two and three or whatever the time was that the show was on. You know, he, I feel like that, you know, those writers grew up together. You know, they, they came to the their stardom together, the Bill Bells and Agnes Nixon and Doug and, yeah. uh, you know, Ken Corday, you know, that, 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 group of people, um, you know, who really were in the thick of it as writers first, you know, in the script writing world. And it's, it's so, uh, I mean, Doug had a love of the character. He wrote, he wrote theme stories about film, you know, he, he said to Liz's point about youth and about young love. And he had a niece who he would turn to, to, you know, get some information about the young, you know, what was going on in the world, you know, for young people and what was happening. And, you know, the, the, his story about, he had a theme, you know, when he was in Loving, he had Noel Beck, you know, had that story on Loving when he was writing there, I believe. And, and Jennifer Ash was one of the actresses who came to As World Turns. He was actually very loyal to a lot of the actors who came from other shows that he had worked on and brought them over. And, um, you know, he was very good to me and, and obviously, and kind of gave me my chops to keep going and not give up on me as a young actor. Um, but, yeah, I mean, my life would have been completely different if I hadn't met Liz. No, if I hadn't got the opportunity to be on the show, first of all, at 15, uh, and then have met Liz. I'm sure I would have been long gone if, if Liz hadn't come into my world and, and taught me what really what acting was about. I tease you and say, you, you've been an actress longer than I have. <laughs> A long time. Martha, I don't think you could, I don't think you could put this into one, but if there was one, the biggest lesson that you've learned from Liz? Oh. Being fearless, you know, being fearless. And you know what Liz said to me once a long time ago? And she said, you know, once you think you know everything in this industry, you know, as an actor, you just quit because you never do. You never stop learning. It always is, it's a never ending process. And I, I, I take that to heart. Uh, because there's always something new that you see, you observe, you take in. Um, and 
that would be one of my biggest lessons as a as a performer to 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 find if you feel like you've got you've hit the wall, uh, and in, in daytime you can tend to do that because you're doing a lot of the same scenes over and over and over again, just sometimes different words. So how do you make it new? How do you make it different? How do you not you know pull your hair out when there's a storyline that you're like I I don't know how to even, how do I even do this? I don't know how to play this, but that's your job. Your job is to find something to play to make it palatable for the audience to make sense. I'm and, still doing it. Mm. I look at people. Right. I look all the time here now. Supposedly I'm, I'm not working particularly. I mean, I, I, I might, but uh, I, I still see things and I put them in the back. And when I taught, I would tell people, you got to plan on things. Your guy, get three cops ready because you're going to play a cop sometime. Get a book, write down business. I don't have to write it down anymore because it goes in my subconscious and it'll pop out. And when you need it, and and that's when you use it and but it what i'm trying to say is here i am now here i am and 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 i i don't binge watch television but i binge read and my handle all i have millions of books in this house there's always something interesting and i can add it to whatever i'm <laughs> i just read dostoevsky a letter he thought shakespeare was a bad writer he's russian because he just threw everything in that's what we love about Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. but there is a, a, a Russian writer saying, that's not the way to write. And, and from the, it, I find that fascinating. That kind of thing interests me. See, I'm, I entertain myself. I'm, I'm, I'm not bored ever. I'm entertained. And, and I can <laughs> stories. And if Martha gave me a problem, I bet you I could come up with a way for your character. You tell me who it is, of course. How to, how to han handle that if you didn't know how do you, how do you handle that. There was a lot of that. There was a lot of back in the, you know, we used to rehearse and practice and things like that. And we would try things in dress rehearsal yeah. that never made it to screen. But we, if we found one thing that made it work, it was worth it, right? It was worth all the silliness and the figuring out and the comfort and playing and, this, and you know, trying it on and seeing it worked. And then we would do it again sometimes or three times back in the eighties, we would do it three or four times and we just do it different each time. And that's the beauty of soap opera is that you have three cameras rolling at the same time. So it is like a play. It's not like a film where you have to shoot the master shot and then you get tighter and tighter and tighter and you have to copy what you did so that it matches and the, you know, as you get tighter and tighter and tighter, but in daytime, it's like, it's live, it's happening in real time. So it's wonderful for the actor because something can happen and it's caught on camera and they can edit it in, they can make it, it's happening as they're watching it, you know, unfold. So it's a wonderful medium for actors. I'm a, it's, just, it's, a, it's so unfortunate that there's no more soap operas in New York for actors to, 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 to be on. We had car actors who had been extras and under fives on our show for 15 years. Like that was their job. They worked on One Life to Live, As World Turns, All My Children and would circulate around the mm -hmm. shows and that was that was their livelihood and that yeah. more it's such a shame it's such a shame because they could watch other actors work directors without you know it was a huge education for so many actors and it was it paid the bills and it was uh part of the new york culture um it's such a shame that there's no more shows in new york I'm to do that i am sure listening to the two of you is a lesson for a lot of people i mean just hearing what liz said that if you were working on something right now that she is sure, and I am 100% sure she could give you some. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I how, give you, how to I play that. you something and you have to see what they want it. I'm, I'm not a, 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 I'm telling you, you have to do it. <laughs> I never like that because I did a lot of English plays that have been done in London because I went to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art and I can do the different accents and all kinds of things. But uh, I never like being told you must do it that way. And one of the nicest things when I when I did, um, God, I can't remember the play I did anymore, was I, I had seen it in London and I said to the director, I saw it, you know, and, but I think I have a different idea. And he said, let me see it. And I got the part. In other words, we're all, whether we're English, German, whatever we are, and if, if we loved our craft, it is a craft, you're learning and you can get better at it and you never stop. Somebody said to me once, you're still taking singing lessons? I wanted to be an opera singer when I was young. And I thought, well, you know, I, and then I happened to be doing something with a real estate agent and she was taking riding lessons. I said, don't you ride? She said, oh, but you always take the lessons. Mm. Dot, dot, dot. In other words, 
there's room. You can grow. You can do something. There's always room for us to learn. Liz, what was the experience going to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts like? <laughs> um, uh, I got the silver medal, first American that ever did. Uh, I had it, uh, you know, you had to audition and I was very serious and I got in and they, they had said to me, we're, we're going to teach you comedy. And uh, uh, you wanted to be able to do everything. You want, I, I wanted to be the greatest actress in the world. So did every other person there. Um, and you had to be old, you had to be young, you had to play a little part, a big part, and you practice things. At one point we had to practice being a crowd. You, you're not a, you don't just turn up in a costume to play a crowd. You have to be somebody who's there in the crowd. You know, your, your wife just left you or you're, you're too fat or whatever you want to play. So we tried everything, all different, kinds of things. And I was lucky when, because I won the, uh, the the silver medal, which is supposed to be the money medal. Ha 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 ha. Thank you. So, <laughs> uh, you know, thanks soaps. You can get me through. And um, I, uh, Leo Carroll, who had been on the committee that got me there, took me to lunch at Sardi's, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he obviously people talked to him because he was a famous actor and he introduces Miss Hubbard and so on and so on. And the producer of Compulsion with Roddy McDowell, said, oh, one of our angel's wives thought it was fun to be on the stage and she's in the crowd scene. If you can wear the dress, you got the job. And that's how I got in that play. I fit the dress. Hmm. And then I, I became an understudy and you know, did other things. So uh, it was the dream to, you know, to cover everything, to be able, and I have played Lady Macbeth and I have played Desdemona. Um, you know, I played different, uh, played uh, Italians, I can't, you know, all kinds of things. Um, and not just always one character, not just always oneself, never try to be somebody else. If, is there, if, if somebody would ask, is there a process for Liz when you're working? Like you get the script and what, Let's say, what's the first thing besides reading it? I mean, like, I read, you, you gotta see what the, what's the facts. Right. I mean, if you are 20 and a pretty blonde, you don't have to play 20 and a pretty blonde. Out. So you have to be, you have to, who wrote it? What era is it in? Uh, what, what else was happening? So what does it mean when you say, I love you or I don't love you or, you know, or I, I'm leaving town? And you, you can't leave that out. You're in context. And then with the really famous things, because I do that a lot, you say it, if you've got the really famous words and you're going to be saying really famous words, do it, I think, you should do it first as yourself. That's, you're not going to use that. But just to hear it, what it would sound like, because all dialogue should sound like it's, uh, that's the way people talk. So if you've got somebody who's talking in a very fancy way, you're just a guy that talks in a fancy way. So you have to figure out a character that talks like that. There are a lot of characters that do that. And, or, uh, so you, you have to find where you fit. For example, when I was in the musical of, um, I remember mama, I played on Trina, the old maid that wants to get married. So I was, I, I think I was 43 and my lover was 26. He had never played a lover because he was a character actor. I had never played an old bag because I was, you know, thought of blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I were rehearsing and I said to Armin Schimmerman, this is it, I said, I know what his laughs there and I cannot get the laughs. I tried this, I tried that, and I, I know it's there. And he said, oh, I can tell you. Oh, he said, you're choosing as if you were the leading lady. You're mm -hmm. not, we're the second, we're the comic people. Oh, so you pick differently. You go at it differently. And I got all the laughs. I got them all. I got them all. That's fun. Fantastic. That's fun. So a lot of people have helped me that way. Uh, when you, I, I, I remember some show I was in, and I said, uh, I, don't, I can't remember the play. I said, I know I should get a hand as I'm leaving. I cannot get it. I've been sincere. I've been everything. I, I can't get it. He said, I can tell you how. He told me. And I got it every time. Collaboration. Raise the pitch of your voice, darling. You'll get the hand. Every time.
but that's because somebody was cared, cared about the craft. They, they, they weren't doing it to make me like them or, you know, stuff like that. Uh, it was the craft that we, we had it. We, and it, it, that stays with you. You do not lose that. Don't sharing think. knowledge. I mean, they they weren't that person wasn't out for themselves. They were sharing with you know sharing. Right. Why not? And I can remember uh, in oh God, how green was my valley? I did that play. The father, a very well known older actor, he once he was sitting next to me and he began doing my part. You know, we were having a cup of coffee or whatever we were doing, and he went on and on and on, and I realized what he was doing later. He was showing me, I can go further. I'm on the right track, go more. So he was doing it for me and I got it. I got it. I got it. But so many people did that for you and that's, you know. You yeah, did that and I'm happy. That, happy. Pass, pass, it, pass it down. Jesse Lee Sofer, who was playing the homosexual star. Yeah. And um, uh, they were doing something and I was doing something and he got, uh, a little upset at me and my the other my grandson said no 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 you don't understand she me she's just looking for how she's going to play this so she's reaching you know looking like oh oh you know he got it and he he didn't think that i was out to hurt him or ruin him she's just looking for her and i, I remember when i had that story i i called everybody i knew would i have a party and have the two guys kissing each other and at my party, you know. And I found out it was a generational thing. The young ones would, older ones wouldn't. They'd ask the hostess first, is it okay if I bring my lover? Is it okay if we kiss in front of you? I think that's interesting. That's interesting. Not that everybody always behave the same. That's fascinating. Um, Liz, when you worked with, um, Rose, Lily's other character. <laughs> how, how how was the difference of of that for you? I'll tell you what I was playing. You'll never know it. <laughs> <laughs> when I finally got you, know, you just, oh my God, you know, what are we doing with this thing? And <laughs> they both hated me, right? They both hated me, but one of them loved me, mm. and that was Lily. So I could tell. I could, you know, I I could use that uh, because. I could learn that and know that. Mm. And that to me is oh. is is um, psychologically correct too. Uh, that was a horrible it's, story. It's so interesting. Oh. I, I'm not an actor, and listening to you tell these stories and and those moments, I think is so helpful for people who are going to pursue this. If there's people, you know, fans listening, pursuing, just talking like, about what that the little that I thing. really loved playing. Uh, Lucinda had a Pissarro. A, a big painting and mm -hmm. played it, that it was a fake and you know I forget who was it whatever it was I remember and I'm very interested in that anyway I've read all the you know those books of, about forgers because it interests me and I I'll tell you what I played because they're making her look like an idiot you know stupid rich lady and all that I know nothing about art I I never went to school I I I know that but I know my picture and it's a fake. You see, you can play that. And I took that from somebody I knew in real life, a friend of my family's who had Paul Clay's. And every year he'd give himself another Paul Clay. And then one year he said to the, the guy, that's, not, that's a fake. And they said, no, what are you talking about? And he was right, because he knew nothing, but he knew his. And that's something I could play with that. Mm. And, I, and it was fun. I like that. Martha reminded me of the Charles Keating story. She said, you have a great story. <laughs> I mean, doesn't everybody have a good Charles Keating story? But this is a really good, that was a good one. But you can tell the story, Liz, about when Lily blew up in the house. And oh, blew up in the house. Good one. And they wrote me a scene where he comes into the room. He was a good actor, by the way, and I liked him. And I go up to him and I beat his chest. You bad man, you did this, you did that. And I said, I'm not doing that. You know, that's how I start. And I'm not doing that. I don't know what we're doing. And I would be talking to dear hairdresser. I would chat with him all the time. He's now dead. Lake, Lake uh, Watson. And, and 
things would develop because he would tell me, he knew I liked stories. So he'd always tell me this happened and then I put a lot of it into the, in, into the work and then chatting to him and I feel free and I said, it's got to be something else. Uh, he's, he has caused my daughter and his son to be blown up in a house. And this is terrible. And so I said, uh, I know what I'll do. I'm not going to talk. I'm going to spit at him. Mm. Talk to the director, M Midnight Maria, God love her. Mm -hmm. said, Make it big so I can get a good picture. You know, I said, I did with lemon juice and, you know, everything like that. And then we, the next thing, the hair is being done and all that. Stuff. And I'm so, still talking to Lake. I said, you know what? You know what it should be like the, the, in, in Argentina when the children were just uh, killed and the mothers would go with the pictures of their children. I'm getting, I'm getting loose paint and show them where, where is my daughter? Where is my son? I said, I'll get a picture of Lily and, and uh, the guy and I'll hold it up to him. Wait, 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 and then spit. I thought that was goddamn good. Mm. <laughs> really did. I like that. That's so great. Um, fans have just been mentioning Ambrose and Jane, which just oh. brought me back. <laughs> that I just brought me that. back. I, I loved him. The first time I met him, I said, that's a nice suit. And he said, yes, it was uh, Alfred's suit, the Lunce. He came from Broadway. And he was six foot four. The deep voice was the law. <laughs> and he was 84, I think. And we became friends. You know, I visited him in the in his house in the country and we would, you know, talk all the time. And uh, um, he would tell me what life was like. And Montgomery Clift was his lover. Oh, I was so bad to him. He said, I was not kind to him. You know, I, I loved him. And he would say, I would say, can I, I'd like to do this today. Is that okay with you? He said, you do whatever you want. I'm with you. Yeah, he was great. Oh, In other words, he wouldn't say, I'm too proud or don't treat me that way or, you know. But one bit of business I loved, I rip up Larry Brigman's picture because I, he doesn't love me and hell with him if he doesn't love me and he doesn't yell down there. And then somebody tells me he's coming to tell you he loves you or to come home. So I took all the pieces of the picture and tried to put them back together again so that he'd be there. I had fun. Mm -hmm. I had fun. Well, those, I mean, that you, you can tell the fans love them. The relationships work. I mean, when you guys connect with people on screen, it's just, it's magic. Um, uh, Martha, some fans were asking if you ha have spoken to Kathleen Widows or Lisa Brown recently. Yeah, I speak to Lisa almost every day. Um, you know, we're so close. I mean, even though it's, I was thinking how long ago we worked together, but um we really we're family you know i mean we are so close uh we sometimes talk two or three times a day you know we're really really tight and kathleen is doing well i uh, eldo who's our incredible makeup artist who are dear friends of ours uh just said that he just spoke to her and she's doing really well she's up in the country and she's great so i'm so happy that she's healthy and doing well and she's amazing i mean again the laughs that we had at the snyder farm and the silliness and the craziness and the you know, one I remember Paul Paul Lammers. You'll remember Liz. You know, Paul Lammers would. He was one of our directors. Had been in the industry forever, and it was right before he was going to retire, pretty much. And he'd see the Snyders coming, and oh, here they come! The loud people. You know, the loud people are coming because we would just sing songs and we would play like the you know the egg beater is instruments, and we were just so silly and. I think a good time, but and they were usually at the end of the day, so I'm sure Paul by then was ready to like go home. Um, but yeah, Kathleen's wonderful, I've seen her as much as I possibly can, and so they're great. I mean, Liz on one side, Lisa on the other, Kathleen on the other, you, yeah. you didn't do so bad. So no. by that. <laughs> That's pretty good, the pretty best good loving over there, you know. I, I think about it now as, as and I was going to Catholic school as a sophomore in high school and I would get my mom would drive me to the city and what other teenager is a, would have that kind of life where I got to work with these wonderful, incredible. Oh, God. I remember when you got a Porsche. You did. I did. I was so against <laughs> I know. I thought this was dangerous. I'm, I'm on West End Avenue and I hear bum, 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 and it comes to Porsche and somebody comes in there and, and you kill this girl. Anyway, you got smart and you sold it. I never had not a ticket, not a 
I was a very responsible teenager, sort of, but with the car. I just worried about you because I thought somebody's going to jump her and it'd be me. I was such, you know, Liz, and you know this too, is that I often talk about, I was in, in on Broadway when I was a kid. You know, I was a broad, New York kid. I, I grew up in the city. I was seasoned New Yorker from, you know, a ten, as a 10 year old, things were happening in the city that were just, I look back now that, you know, 54th street in 1980 was not exactly the most uh, <laughs> uh, pure place to, to grow up in, but I loved it. So I feel like I will never, I could never trade that for anything because it really made me see the world in a certain way that I took with me forever, you know, a certain awareness of, of people and, um, you know, even then we did the, the Annie documentary about the Annie girls and those girls went to Studio 54 after the show and like they were around the city and like they, what is going on? But it was such an incredible way to grow up. Like I feel like to have that freedom uh, was so, I didn't go to Studio 54, but I went back to New Jersey. But um, <laughs> something about that worldly experience and being, being in the theater and then working on a sh the show, I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. You know, I had a normal life, you know, on the side. It was like my normal life, but I uh, I had the life of, of a, a dream to work with Brian Bloom and John Hensley and Kathleen and all, and Liz. I say something, in the olden days, people didn't go to acting school. Walter Hamden was a friend of my family, famous, famous Hamlet. You went into a company, mm. you watched. And you played some small party, you did something or whatever it was. So there wasn't you being told every minute you've got to play it that way. You you watched and then you learned. And, and then maybe your father, if he ran the company, helped you or somebody helped you. And so it, it was more, uh, um, a, again, a family. True. Kind of like our family. Because we had, I pitched, oh God, I pitched stories left and right with everybody, Anthony Herrera, Jean Leclerc, everybody, the refugees, uh, you know, all of that. And I gave, I wrote one in Africa. I gave everybody on the show a part that would go with their character and it would fit. Dr. John would be doctoring, I'd be writing my memoirs and you know, this would happen and that would happen. And we were a family and one could even, by the way, once Kim Zimmer wanted to do something with refugees when I was doing it, and I said, they're great, but your your kids are too young. You know, wait, wait a bit. Liz, Liz, talk about your your philanthropic work and your work with refugee women in Uganda. Well, I, I I don't think of it that way. You know, I I again, it, it happened to me. Somebody I knew at school, and I was at a, a party for the reunion or something, and she said, "What about that?" and and then asked me, "Would I?" be interested in, in getting involved. And I said, yes. And then she sent me with People magazine to uh, Bosnia. And uh, you know, I'm happy, what can I do? And also educated me. And I, I could go listen to the NGO briefings at the, you know, I'm, I love information. I'm terminally curious as a child and as an uh, old, old dowager. I'm still curious. I just eat it up. So I learned more and more. And then this one thing came to another and then you know, one thing came to another. And so I've had many trips and I was in Eritrea when the war started with Ethiopia. That was interesting. Uh, you know, so I've had, it, it brought me, um, I was helping, I, I hoped, because I was bringing the people that look at the soaps, giving them some nourishment on that subject so that they know and they, oh, well, she did that. So, and, and they paid attention. And, and for example, the lady that, uh, that made this, made a, um, a picture. It was for a seed project that I had so that everybody can give somebody a packet of seeds, you know, come on. And everybody gave, and I, and I sent it to Bosnia because we can all be part of it. We just have to find a way. And, and I hope that, just being me as, as Lucinda me or whoever me is that brought some help and, and that I'm proud of that. Uh, and I wish, you know, there was more that I could come up with. Hmm. Well, it's, it's to be applauded. I mean, it's to, to bring education to folks, to, to 
share that with your audience is important. And you've done that over the years. So I applaud you. Liz, do you have a favorite medium? Stage, TV, film? I, no. I, I, I like the, the fact that we were in a series, our stories, because it had legs, it kept going. You know, it, 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 mm -hmm. in the theater, you've got to make sure, you know, that you, you can handle it. I played uh, nine, and a hum, nine and a half months in Look Back in Anger. That's how I saw America. I was the national tour. And then I paid, played nine and a half months downtown playing Polly Peachum. And you got to keep, you got to keep it going. You know, nine and a half months is a lot of work. And I remember once I thought, oh God, I missed my cue. Oh, geez. I'm going insane. And it wasn't one of the actors had gone and just blank. And I've seen that happen. I, and thank God it hasn't happened to me, but you have to keep it alive. Uh, so I like, you know, I, I'd love to be in, in, in uh, you know, with um, Jesse Lee Sofer. I, there's no part for me there. But uh, um, where Chicago you, police? We you know that, uh, yeah, because you can go a different way. And what's good about that, what I like about the show, I like to look, they're all good. You know, that's good. The beautiful girl is gorgeous, but sometimes she doesn't look so hot. Good. You know, there are days when she doesn't, when, or and then she can be very brave and she can be very frightened or what they all, and so it gives you, it gives you legs. And the soaps gave us legs and you could look at it and say, gee, I messed up there. Cause you could watch yourself and say, oh my God, why did I do that? I gotta do something else. Are there other shows like Chicago PD that you watch? I, I tend to look at uh, some of the English shows. I like to listen to the, I, I don't do all the things that other people do. Uh, I like to listen to the accents and they're all getting Americanized. I think they're not so good as they used to be, but there was one I told Martha about it, called Shetland. It takes place way in the North of the Shetland Islands. Don't understand a word they're saying, but I like it. I like to listen to them and I like to look at them. So I, I do it that way. Uh, and and I I wish things were less formulaic now. You know, there are too many murders in Midsummer Murder. You know, come on, <coughs> pick one. You know, be original. <laughs> well, but <laughs> kill a man, kill a girl, <laughs> kill a goat, kill a thing. So everybody's covered. We, we killed one of those. You know. uh, I don't think so. But every time you go in, there's a, there's a wine shop where I live in Southbury, Connecticut. When you go to pay, you have to go up, you know, to the place and there are stuff on the wall and, and there's from Jaws, there is uh, a picture of, of um, Robert Shaw, you know, uh, big up there. And I always say, hi, Robert, I just, I'll, I'll see him play anything. He's, he's, a actor. He, he, they're all dead now. But, uh, Gerald Gordon is dead. Mike, you know, yeah. Martha, are you doing some work on on the Hallmark Channel? You want to talk about? I just I am doing a project for Hallmark that, of course, I can't mention what it's all the details about it. But I'm I'm really I really focus more on my producing side now, and I don't really uh, there's no acting for me at all, which is fine. And I I've been really as Liz knows, and I've you know Liz has been so supportive of that side of my career, and I have shared with her my journey to this side, I say journey, but it's been a really long one of producing and getting things made. And so, yeah, I'm excited to be working with Hallmark and they'll be talking about it soon, what it is and on the producing side. And I'm always, uh, you know, I've write, written a few things. I'm working with Laura Lee Bell on two shows and we're developing two shows, two dramas. And so I'm, I'm always, always working, trying to get things done. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. We'll, we'll, all, we'll all keep our eyes peeled. Thank you. Liz, Liz, one last question. Let's, what, is there a person or what drew you to acting early on as a young? Oh, I was taken to the opera and I saw Mignon where she's been uh, stolen by, gyp she's by gypsies, you know, that, anyway. And I loved it and I wanted to be an opera singer. Mm -hmm. That's all I wanted when I was young, and I sang and, and did a lot of things like that. And, uh, and I guess and then just moved on for the acting. And I've done musicals. I've done a lot of musicals. And uh, 
and I've even played opera singers. I played an opera singer, um, but I, I, and again, my family was for that. Uh, there was no problems. My father was at Columbia. My mother was a doctor and lived in New York. We went to the theater a lot. You could then just walk into the theater. Ha, ha, ha. You know, <laughs> now you can't, and it's not, it wasn't that expensive or anything like that. So it, it, and my father and being at Columbia, he was in charge of all the extracurricular activities in the college. So that was the, the, the spectator, the, the varsity club, you know, the, the various plays. So we saw many, 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 many plays. And, uh, and I, it, it seemed natural to me. It, it, it was no big, oh, I had to fight my family to do not, nothing like that. I think that's an important fact to, uh, for, I had the same experience as far as the support behind me. My, when I said to my mother, I want to do this, they never said, why, <laughs> why bother? You know, and they never made me feel like I was, would never happen. Um, and I think that's extremely important. I don't care what your child says they want to do, let them figure that out for themselves, whether it really works for them or not. You know, I, I went on an open audition for Annie with 700 girls and their mothers, an open audition. <laughs> And um, my mother stood online with me for hours and I got, I, you know, six callbacks later, I actually got in the show. I don't think my mother ever thought I would get the job. I think she figured I, I would stop bothering her if she actually took me finally to the audition. But it really just showed you her, and her mom passed away when I was auditioning in the middle of my auditions. And my mom had to make a choice. Do I do I not let my daughter go to this incredible experience at nine years old, or do I, you know, what do I do? And and I I remember she let my aunt drive me to the city for one of my auditions while she went to you know obviously pay her respects and be with her mom and at the funeral and and my aunt was a chain smoker, so I remember driving to the city like sucking on lemons, going to the, my my aunt Patty driving with the cigarettes coming out of the mouth, and and I got to my audition and I sang. I guess, but um, there was no way I wasn't going to do it. I, I had to do it. It was it's such a um, uh, drive that I had. But if my parents didn't support it, I, think I try to be as a, as a mother myself, and I have three children, is let them, let them, like Liz said, let it come to you, right? Let it come to them. Life happen. Let, let it happen. I can't dictate. It happen. It's and not, I, I should, I can't dictate who they are. I can't, it's not, I, I feel very, because I had my own experience of support and because it became, it was such an important, uh, my whole life it was dictated by that support uh, as a young person. I wanna give my children that as well. I wanna give them the, the opportunity to see the world and see what's out there as opposed to me telling them what they should be doing. You know, every parent has an instinct of what they think their kids should be doing or what we, they feel should go in what direction because you know them so well. But you you can't do that. It's, it's, it's my mother never told me that I couldn't ever. And my father too. It was just like, it, it was so, uh, I don't know. I, I feel like to the acting and to my own personal life, I had that freedom um, and fearlessness about what I did because no one ever told me you can. can't. I'm not sure that I would be an actor now if I were. Right, I agree with that. I agree with that. It, it, things have changed too hard. I agree with that. And uh, if, you don't, if you don't have support, it's, it makes. A I don't mean it that way. The way difference. stories are being told, uh, everything is run by the, the you know the group and so on and the suit. Oh. You know. I, to Liz's point is that you know. Even in, in the soap world, even in the soap world, they don't. The process is so quick now, and they don't have time really to to you know. Everything's changed, right? Everything has changed, and the I would never get the job on a soap opera the way I looked when I was when I started. I would never get a job today as a girl with teeth, bad teeth, and kind of little chunky and like a you know. I wasn't I wasn't a beauty by any means. I was cute, but. I'm sure they would have killed me on the internet. I would have been so upset. Like I, I they're going to kill us tomorrow, honey. Probably. <laughs> no, there is so much love here for the two of you. No, there's and Liz, so much love. No, I, I have a wonderful fan story. I, I was playing in Joe Egg. It, it was a woman 
you know, that, that said, I don't mean gas chambers, but put them to death. I, I, I say that yes, in this, did. I did that. Anyway, I get a little, uh, there was a joke, a running joke with lighting a cigarette. And uh, I get a little lighter that says, Joe egg, it's an egg, it's that big. And from Tiffany, who sent it? I don't know. That, uh, so I tracked it back through Tiffany's and I found out, and it was a young lady, a, a sort of a pale, a, a black young lady, but youngish. And so I invited her to come backstage and see me at the theater. And you know, thank her and you know for doing that. And she said, "You understand that it's fear that makes hate." Thank you. All. That's what I was playing. Mm -hmm. So we're 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 getting to each other. Yeah. And if if you can learn that, and I can remember the first time as it, we went to the theater a lot when I was young, uh, we went to something in South Africa, black man go to Johannesburg, never come back, never come back. And I felt something. It was a black guy in South Africa to me and I'm you know, 11 years old. You feel it, you don't know what it is. Mm. And that's why our profession, along with the, the ministry, uh, you know, we're bringing nourishment and hope and possibilities. I, I, I had a, a show that I was doing for children at one point called Possibilities because there are all these things that you can think about. You may not do it, but you can be part. You can be in it. You can be there. And we're all in it together at the way we are now with this horrible thing that's happening. We can help each other. I found that up here, people want to help me because they were worried about me and stuff like that. Thank you. You know, mostly people didn't want to help me. They just wished that I dropped dead. But we, we can be together. I don't think so. No. I don't mean that. But I mean, and I don't know. We, 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 you know, I have to say, one, I'm always humbled by the fans and their support because, you know, the fact that I haven't been on the show for t ten, over 10 years now, 11 years now, which is crazy to me. But, you know, the, 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 the loyalty and the support that we are given because of, we spent our days with you. We were in your living room every day. And there's a relationship, as Liz said, there's a role that the fans play in our yeah, in what we do. Yeah. So we felt that. All the, all I want the fans to know is that every single day when we would go into the studio and we would rehearse and we'd pull up our scripts and we would say, the, the fan, they're not gonna believe that. If we do that, we, can't, we have an, a responsibility to the fans to do it truthfully because that's our job. And they're they're gonna they're gonna context. It has to live in a in a place in life that makes sense. Correct. It's, it's, over, it's over thirty years it's since you both started. Surely, in, in this different mm -hmm. time, we have to make sense of what we're living through, and it, hope it, that we all come out better. Not just hope. You know, hope is a thing with feathers, but that we can somehow learn and 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 add uh, stick together and make a, a bigger human creation. Better world. Thank you. Thank you. Liz, any chance we would get a memoir from you? Lots of fans are asking. <laughs> Lots of them. I, I've been writing and writing and writing for years and years, but uh, I don't know, you know. Well, keep, keep it in mind. Mm -hmm. um, before we end, Liz, do you want to sing us out, read us a poem? I heard you might want to. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> not, not to you don't have to. No, I was just gonna that I used to send those poems. I love doing that to the fans. Yeah. And just, Do you want to read one? No, they're too they're too long. Oh, oh, oh okay. I'll just read the beginning of one. Wait a minute. This is not this is Polish. We know how difficult things were in Poland. I'm just gonna read the first few lines. Okay. It's called Try to Praise the Mutilated World. Try to praise the mutilated world. Remember June's long days and wild strawberries, drops of wine, the dew, the nettles that methodically overgrew the abandoned homestead of exiles. You must praise the mutilated world. And it goes on like that. I had said that something earlier of Rilke, where he says, oh, poets, what do you do? What do you do? We praise, we praise. To me, that says, we have to move it to a better thing if we can. 
with compassion and with feeling and with heart and dignity and uh, and, and uh, make us a, a group. Uh, and I send all them, the fans who, who I don't know, but I, I send love to them and, and stay strong, follow the rules, all the stuff that we have to live with now. Yeah. And we have to, we just, and we will, and we'll get help from each other to do it and, and let the love, let it, let it overwhelm us. Thank you both so, so much. Thank you. Don't stay back, stay backstage for a minute. Cause we can talk for a minute. Thank you both for being here. I so appreciate it. I know the fans are really happy Liz you turned up today and Martha thank you for helping make this happen see you guys in a minute okay. thank you everybody for tuning in I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did uh Wednesday don't forget we have a guiding light show with the Santos family and another as the world turns show next Friday thanks so much have a great weekend everybody bye-bye <laughs>